Dr. W.F. Komwin. Praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to the Tuesday leadership development tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that the Lord will open your heart, open your ears open your very personality yeah. so that we know that the word of God is real and as the word of God comes to you you will receive and you will act on the word in Jesus name yeah. many people lose the impact of the word because they think this is not for our generation or this is not for the church and they do not understand the principles that are steady and the principles you draw out of the word of God and so I want you to so open your heart don't say because this passage is dealing with tribulation period and the church would have gone in the rapture before the tribulation Therefore, we just study. Every part of the word of God is important. Important for you, important for me, important for the church at this time, and important for the world at this time as well. And so please open your heart to the word, and the Lord bless the word into your life, into your ministry, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name because you are a great God. And every part of your word, you have preserved a message for everyone. Everyone in the church, every member, everyone in the church, every leader, everyone in the church, workers and leaders. And we're praying, oh Lord, that tonight you take this word and make application to every life in Jesus name we we'll pray Lord the power in your word will not be lost on us the impact of your word will not be lost on us as we hear let your spirit apply the word to every one of our lives in Jesus name I will pray the grace to do it the strength to do it, the power to do it, the commitment and consecration to be obedient to every part of your word, you grant to everyone in Jesus' name. This new year, give us a new attitude, a new disposition, a new response to your word that your word will be, will be fresh and new and our lives will be renewed by your word all through this year in Jesus' name. Bless your people, Lord, and make us channels of blessing to all the people, all our members, and all the people who will come across us in ministry. Help us, Lord, to be of tremendous benefit to everyone this year in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Thank you very much. You can sit down. Tonight already, as you have seen from a review of Sardis Scripture, you know that we are dealing with Revelation chapter 9. Actually, Revelation chapter 9 comes inside the period of the great tribulation as i've told you before let me just repeat 
briefly again that the book of Revelation is divided to three parts. Number one, you have chapter one, the glorified Christ revealed. Number two, you have the message to the church. And the Spirit says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. So you have chapters 2 and 3, you have the church period. And then there is rapture. Because after chapter 3, we find the 24 elders representing the church. We find them already in heaven. And we find the living creatures around the throne, before the throne, and all surrounding and worshipping the Lord. How do we know it's the church? Because they testified that you have redeemed us from the earth and from all tribes by thy blood and you have made us referring to christ you have made us priests and kings unto the lord and that's the period now the church is ready in heaven after the rapture and then in chapter six we have the great tribulation beginning you understand the seals being opened and the seals being opened until the end of chapter six there is parentheses in chapter seven telling us about the seals the tribulation says uncountable from every tongue and from every tribe and from every kindred and then you come to chapter eight when the seals continued to be opened there was a great silence in heaven for about 30 minutes because of the great things that were still to come at the end of that chapter 8 in verse 13 you have the angel declaring woo 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 because of the tremendous and the devastating things that are still going to take place and that brings us now to chapter 9 which is still in the midst of that great tribulation but we're picking two verses that are very very essential for us uh, today look at revelation chapter 9 now we're reading from verse 20 in revelation chapter 9 reading from verse 20 and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of their war of the works of their hand that they should not worship devils or and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk and then in verse 21 it says neither repented they of uh, their mothers nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their selves what do you understand by that as the lord allowed the tribulation on them he wanted them to repent he wanted them to see that if while they're still on the earth all these devastations will take place all the plagues will take place all the suffering will take place to the point that as the spirit scorpions they were biting uh, the people or stinging striking uh, the people as those local spirits or spirit locals was striking them they even wanted to die and they could not die if it was so serious the lord wanted them to understand that it's going to be getting more serious and more serious and when they cross over this earth and they go to the great beyond it's going to be so serious this one is just so five months at a time when the scorpion will bite them or will strike them but when they go to the great beyond it will not be five months it will not be five years Years. it will not be 50 years it will not be 5,000 years it will be forever and ever and ever and the Lord wanted them to see that and to repent of their sorceries of their things of their evil of their fornication but it says they repented not look at uh, the intention of God in second Peter chapter 3 and I'm reading from verse 9 second Peter chapter 3 we're looking at verse 9 it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is not suffering toward us 
not willing that any should perish understand even during the great tribulation the intention of the lord is not that anybody should perish is not sly concerning his promise after the rapture the very following week christ could have come back but is low in coming back is taking his time is coming back is giving chance to the people the people of the world who will be in the world at that time that's why it will take another month then another year then another year three and a half years and then the first part of tribulation will pass and they will see all the plagues and all the suffering the Lord is waiting like that because even for those people, he wanted their repentance. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards what not willing that any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. That's why tonight we're looking at the message divine long suffering waiting for man's delayed repentance you see man delays their repentance instead of repenting immediately immediately they hear the word instead of repenting immediately the messenger of god in person as a preacher comes to them they ought to repent but they keep on uh, delaying uh, the repentance and then god sends messengers that are plagues messengers that will bring suffering uh, messengers that are creatures of god and then they begin to torment them even with those messengers they still forget that they ought to repent and then god sends them miracle he sends them release he sent them some kind of relief and even with that mercy of god they still fail to repent that's why we're calling it man's delayed repentance divine sub, uh, divine long suffering the lord waiting and waiting and waiting for man to repent the same thing today if you are there you are you need to repent why are you delaying if you are there you need to turn around why are you delaying if you are there you need to make right your way and you need to be properly adjusted in your life so that you are in relationship with god so that you are in good terms with god so that your sins are forgiven your life is turned around your life is transformed and there are things you need to put in place in your life and the lord has been waiting why would you keep him waiting he wants you not to delay any longer he wants our family members not to delay any longer he wants our members members in the church not to delay any longer now at this time while the chance is there and while the opportunity is there you turn you repent you return to the lord you believe on the lord jesus christ and then the grace of god comes and then the power of god comes and then the transformation that ought to follow repentance comes to you and then judgment will roll away from you and from everyone that repents like that in jesus name we're looking at uh, three points today in the message number one the mystery of godlessness depriving men of repentance uh, you'll be surprised and you think how is it that men suffer and yet you'll not repent and god changes his method and he blesses them and yet they will not repent he gives them the word he sends a preacher like a jonah from a far country and sends to them to nineveh the ninevites repented but they would not repent is the mystery of iniquity is the mystery of godlessness that deprives men from repentance point number two the, the messengers of god drawing men to repentance any messenger of god any man 
any woman you say you are a servant of God you are a messenger of God and the Lord sends you to people it's not to go and entertain them the Lord sends us to people as his messengers to draw men unto repentance understand that's the very heart of God that's the very desire of God and that is the very purpose why God will send a messenger from anywhere to a group of people the messengers of God drawing men to repentance point number three the mercy of God driving men towards repentance whether it's the messengers who are preaching or is the mercy of God that manifests his love, manifests his power, manifests his healing. And then you say, praise the Lord, he healed me. The Lord does not want you to stop at that point of healing. Praise the Lord, the Lord has given me something good. The goodness of God has impacted my life. The Lord does not want you to stop at that goodness. The goodness of God is there to lead you to repentance the mercy of God driving men towards repentance let's come to point number one in point number one we find the mystery the mystery of godlessness depriving men of repentance let's come back to that revelation chapter 9 verse 20 this is a great mystery but it's the mystery of iniquity the mystery of godlessness it tells us and the rest of the men which were not killed by these slaves yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils or I and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk the people that uh, worship idols even though the idol is not helping them or healing them or delivering them or getting them out of their trouble out of their trial out of their tribulation they still will not repent and they do not think this idol cannot see what they are suffering this idol cannot move and get all the plagues away from them yet there's no repentance it tells us in verse 21 it says in verse 21 neither repented they of their mothers nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their says look at chapter 16 reading from verse 8 Revelation chapter 16, reading from verse 8, and the fourth angel poured out his veil upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. It was so hot, it will be as safe. There is liquid fire all around them and will scorch them. The pain will be terrible and the pain will be unbearable. Would they repent because of that? Would they say, God, we're sorry? We know that all this is coming upon us because of our sin, because of our evil. Not at all. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and men were scorched with great heat and they blasphemed the name of God which has power over these plagues and they repented not look at that they repented not they would rather blaspheme god they rather insult god they rather almost nullify god as if god should not exist and they repented not to give him glory and look at three things here. number one iniquity and hardness of heart during the tribulation at the time of the great tribulation although the suffering will be much and the plagues will be much there will be hardness of heart in their iniquity number two in penitence and harvest of hardship for transgressors the harvest of hardship 
what they sow, they reap. And they reap in multiplied folds. They sow sin, they sow evil, they sow fleshly acts, they sow worldliness, they sow slander, they sow bad language. And yet, even though they do that, that doesn't relieve them. Yet, they are having the harvest of their hardness of heart. And they, have, they still keep on in their impenitence. Number three, ignorance and hope of hypocrites in their travails. They have travails. They have trouble. They have tragedy. And they have the things that will come upon them. And all those things coming upon them, instead of driving them, and instead of moving them, instead of calling them and motivating them to repentance in their travail, they still have the hope of the hypocrites. Look at number one iniquity and hardness of heart during the tribulation already we have read revelation chapter 9 we have read revelation chapter uh, 16 look at um, exodus chapter 8 we are reading from verse 17 exodus chapter 8 verse 17 this is what happened when god said unto pharaoh let my people go suffering upon suffering travail upon travail tragedy upon tragedy and the man kept on hardening his heart look at verse 17 it says and they did so for aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the doors of the earth and it became lies in man and in beast as all the doors of the land became lies throughout all the land of egypt and then in verse 18 in verse 18 and the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lies but they could not so there were lies upon man and upon beast and then in verse 19 and the magicians then the magicians said unto pharaoh this is the finger of god this is not ordinary this is punishment this is plague and this is because of egypt's rebellion against god and pharaoh's hardness of heart and they told him this is a serious matter but look at this and pharaoh's heart was hardened and he hearkened not unto them as the lord had said uh, that the difficulty of people even though they are suffering uh, they say well uh, why was god looking at what did he allow this to come upon me exactly it will be like that at the time of the great tribulation in zechariah chapter 7 reading from verse 12 zechariah chapter 7 looking at verse 12 yea they made their hearts as an adamant stone that's what they did they reconditioned their mind that they will not listen they reconditioned their hearts that they will not listen and they make their own hearts as hard as adamant stone lest they should hear the law and the words which the lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets therefore therefore because of that hardening of heart because of that rigid rebellion and because of that refusal to repent therefore came a great wrath from the lord of the lord of hosts we're looking at number two now number two is the impenitence of the people and the harvest of hardship for transgressors we're reading from proverbs chapter 13 verse 15 proverbs chapter 13 reading from verse 15 good understanding giveth favor 
God does something, you have good understanding. God weeps you, you have understanding. God chastises you, you have understanding. God corrects you, you have understanding. Like our fathers chastise their children. Like our fathers correct their children. And those children, if they have good understanding, this is love from daddy, this is love from mommy to do this to me. I know he loves me. I know she loves me, but it's my way that is bringing this upon me. That good understanding makes them to soften down and makes them to repent and makes them to seek the favor of their parents. But there are many people on the other side, they keep on transgressing. There's no change. There's no transformation. But the way of transgressors is hard. The way of transgressors is hard. When God gives chance to repent and there is no repentance, eventually the person will have delusion, self-deception. It tells us in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we're looking at verse 9. It says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 9, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. The Antichrist will have the purpose and the plan of Satan to carry out. And during that great tribulation, it will be the plan and the purpose of the antichrist of satan that will be carried out upon men and it says even him whose coming is after the walking of satan with all power and signs and lying wonders look at verse 10 it says and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love for the truth that they might be saved even at that time of the great revelation it will be possible to get saved if they have love for the truth if they understand that the plagues coming upon them, the suffering coming upon them is because of their hardness of heart, but because they receive not the love of the truth. That's why they will not be saved. In verse 11, it says in verse 11, after, but after, and for this cause, shall God send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. They will think by being bold faced against God, God will have to change. They will not repent. They will not change. God will have to change. When we become hardened against God and we blaspheme his name and then we spread errors about that God. God will be so ashamed that he'll have to change his mind and we will not perish. That the deceivableness of all unrighteousness. And because of that, God will permit that strong delusion and that self-destruction, that self-deception, that they should believe a lie. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, that they they all, no exception, anyone who refuses to repent, God has no favorite. And Adam sinned, and then that was the first created man, and then God drove him and Eva out of the garden, and then all the other people after that generation as they sinned and did evil and instead of repenting they became adamant and they became stubborn and they became rigid and became hardened they'll, they'll be driven out of the kingdom that's why it said that they all without exception might be damned who believed not the truth but at pleasure in 
of righteousness. Number three, number three, we have the ignorance and the hope of hypocrites in their travail. The ignorance and the hope of hypocrites in their travail. Look at Leviticus chapter 26. In Leviticus chapter 26, I'm reading from verse 14. Leviticus 26, verse 14. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, look at verse 18. In verse 18, it tells us, and if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will more I will punish you seven times more for your sins. You see, at the time of the great tribulation, there will be people instead of repenting, instead of getting on their faces before the Lord and saying, We surrender, we are the criminals, we are the transgressors, we are the evil people. We brought this upon ourselves. They will say, He'll be tired. He punishes us now. He breaks off the plague now. He'll be tired. Instead of a sin, they will repent. They say no. It's like, you know, two people, A and B, they're looking at one another and they're saying, I'm going to say the one who will blink first. And then this one is opening wide the, the, the eyes, I will not blink. And then the other one is saying, I will not blink. They're trying to play that game with God. That God has punished them now. A plague has come. And then the second seal is opened. And the third seal is open. And they still keep their eyes wide open. They say, I will not blink for God. God will have to blink. And then they think they will overcome God. Look at this in verse 18. In, Lamin, in uh, uh, Leviticus chapter 26 verse 18. It says, and if you will not yet for all this, hearken unto me. Then I will punish you seven times more for your sins look at verse 21 in verse 21 and if ye walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me i will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins you see what god is saying god is saying i am god i change not my demand is always my demand where I stand is always where I stand. I am the creator. You are creatures. If anyone is to bend, you are to bend. If anyone is to turn, you are to turn. But if they do not turn, it multiplies their punishment seven times. If that doesn't bring repentance, it multiplies seven times again. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, and if you will not be reformed by me, by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, verse 24, it says, then I will also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins look at verse 27 in verse 27 and if ye will not for all this hearken unto me but walk contrary unto me look at verse 28 it says in verse 28 then i will walk contrary unto you also in fury I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. See what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying, all I'm waiting for is for you to repent. All I'm waiting for is for you to turn. And at the time of the great tribulation, that's what the Lord will be waiting for. Even in our own time, there's tribulation now, not the great tribulation. There's trial now, there's suffering now, there are people who are sick, there are people who have plagues upon them, and instead of 
turning around instead of repenting instead of calling upon the lord instead of bending the knee before the lord instead of raising their hands in surrender unto the lord they still keep on in their evil way in their transgression in their tradition in their idol worship or in their evil and they don't see it they ought to repent you ought to repent you ought to repent and repentance is not limited to uh, you know the sinners we go to them in the village we go to them on the field and we say repent repent that's right but you know what a Jonah has to repent you know the Lord and the Lord is sending you somewhere and the Lord sends you there and instead of going the right direction you go the opposite direction and then you are swallowed up in a whale and then all the devastation and all the pressure and all the calamity comes and you go to the death of the sea although you're a prophet although you're a preacher although you are somebody who says i know the lord i hear the voice of the lord he sends me on errands but now something has happened you ought to repent don't just transfer repentance to all the other people you know what a thomas has to repent i will not believe except i put my hand in the hole of his hand you know thomas the one that says i'm a child of god and one of the disciples you ought to repent as well and as the lord comes and he says thomas come on here put your hand in the fingernails and then put your hand in my in my side you ought to come and bow before the lord i'm sorry for saying what i said you are my lord and you are my god a thomas has to repent a peter has to repent as well your peter and the lord is saying i'm going to the cross and i'm going to die and you become so bold and you hold the hand of the lord and you say that will not happen you are so authoritative now and the way you talk to christ and you the way you talk about christ is like you and christ your classmates it's like you are the same level and now you can talk like this and say i peter i said this will not happen you know what peter you need repentance and when jesus said get there behind me satan it's a serious matter and so we as leaders you check up your life and you check up your disposition and then there is repentance if there's repentance what does repentance bring for the sinner what does repentance bring for the member what does repentance bring for a peter what does repentance bring for a jonah or it brings reconciliation it's repentance that leads to reconciliation he escape it makes you to escape the judgment of god p there is peace because it is repentance that brings the peace into your life e there is entry you are able to enter into the kingdom you are able to enter into the goodness of god into the favor of god you are able to enter into that inner circle of privileged believers in the sight of the lord and your name is written in heaven it is repentance that brings that you remember the children of israel going from egypt onto the land of canaan the promised land and they sinned against the lord and god told moses he that sins against me him will i blot out of my book which have written it is repentance that will bring your name back again reaching and it is repentance that brings tenderness when you repent you're no more hard you're no more incorrigible when you repent you're no more kind of bold face against the lord repentance brings tenderness 
your life is tender your language is tender and you're holding anything is tender you're dealing with people relating with people you become tender if the tenderness is not there it's very doubtful if you have repented and then a there is acceptance acceptance it is when peter uh, stops uh, you know challenging christ and stop you know pindering christ and stop uh, being proud and you know knowing more than christ it is then acceptance will come and then uh, name uh, trusted name you trust in the name of the lord because you have repented and there is nothing between you and god it is possible to have the name of the lord to be trusted and then there's clemency clemency there's leniency upon you you have repented and got what god said i will do before he will no longer do because the king and all the people of Nineveh, after they had the word of god everyone the king came down from his throne and he threw doors on their on their on their heads and then they, they left all the vowels in their hands and god said i cannot destroy them again I have to be leaning towards them and there is clemency and it is repentance that brings that and eventually brings endearment endearment you become endeared to god because of that repentance that's what these people in the time at the time of the great revolution that's what he failed to do and i pray when it comes to our turn if there's anything to be repented of in our lives will repent and will not allow the plague and the punishment and the suffering and the travail to keep on and on because we are so rigid in our rebellion against the word of god against the word of god the lord himself bring good repentance total repentance acceptable repentance to everyone in jesus name that amen looks very low we're coming to point number two now point number two the messengers of god drawing men to repentance the messengers of god drawing men to repentance i need to explain this to you when we talk of messengers god has all the world as his messengers messengers grade one the people who are preachers of the word of god that's messengers grade one messengers if those messengers come and they do not lead us to repentance that is we do not accept to repent god will send messengers great too and those are the soft the people or the things that cause suffering and when he lays the suffering on people they did not listen to messengers great one that's what happened to manasseh god sent messengers great one the servants the prophets the preachers and he spoke to manasseh and spoke to all the people around manasseh manasseh said get out of my sight who sent you what authority do you have to come and talk to me about repentance all right so grade one messengers left affliction then came and then that suffering when the suffering came it was unbearable manasseh did not listen to messengers grade one eventually affliction bowed him down affliction kind of crushed his rebellion and he repented other people there are messengers great three and that uh, those are the you know mercies of god manifestation of his love uh, that comes and then uh, because of the mercy 
because of the healing, because of the deliverance, because of the progress and the promotion. They now see, they say, uh -uh, why am I acting like this? Look at this God. I've not been serving him and yet he's blessing me because of this mercy and because of this manifestation of his goodness, I will repent. So you have three levels of messengers. Let's look at them. Number one, the principal messengers calling men to repentance. Number two, the painful miseries chasing men towards repentance number three the precious manifestations challenging men to repentance let's look at number one in number one we have the principal messengers calling men to repentance look at second chronicles chapter 36 and verse 14 second chronicles chapter 36 Verse 14, moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the hidden and polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed, honored, set apart, and glorified in Jerusalem. Verse 15, in verse 15, and the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Look at verse 16, in verse 16, but they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of God arose against his people till there was no remedy. Those are messengers, grade one. They are the people, they are the preachers, they are the pastors, they are the teachers, they are the evangelists that go to the people as messengers of God calling them to repentance. I want you to look at Luke chapter 24. In Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 47, Luke chapter 24, verse 47, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. That's the preference of God. His messengers, great one, the preachers. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be oppressed. You don't have to be hungry. You don't have to go into prison. You don't have to suffer anything. He says, messengers, great one. And he preach the word. And if you're intelligent, and if you're obedient, and if you give in to the word of God, that's sexual sins. You repent and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and it's all over. But if people do not listen to messengers, great one, the preachers, look at number two now. Number two, the painful miseries chasing men towards repentance. Look at Psalm 119 verse 67. Psalm 119 verse 67 Before I was afflicted, I went astray. The psalmist said he was just putting his leg everywhere, here, 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 in the pit, pitfall, on the mountain, in the valley, among the Gentiles, in the world, anywhere, or just walking anyhow. And then affliction came. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. There are people like that. When they are healthy, and when everything is going well for them, and they, they are sound, they are happy, the happier they are, the more careless they become. 
the happier they are, the more forgetful they become. And because they are happy, and because they are healthy, everything is okay. Although they come to church, they really don't listen to the word of God. And the messenger, great one, the preachers of the word, brings the word unto them. They don't pay attention. And then God sees that this one, if I don't send messengers greet you he will never recollect himself and i don't want him to perish because of that affliction comes before i was afflicted i went astray but now after the affliction after the suffering after the sickness after that pressure after the pain after all that i've suffered now i have kept thy word the affliction brought them back to their senses i pray you will not wait for affliction in jesus name we're looking at deuteronomy chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 29 deuteronomy chapter 4 we're reading from verse 29 it says but if from this Thou shalt seek the Lord thy God. Thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Verse 30. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in thy latter days, if thou turn, to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient to his voice. Remember, it's not talking about the tribulation in the latter days. The children of Israel had been favored. Water out of the rock. Manna out of heaven. Revelation of God given to them. Enemies drowned in the Red Sea. And then uh, they conquered the kings of Og and Bashan. And then they conquered the Philistines. Everything was going so well. And the Lord had raised them up and gave them good kings. Eventually, they forgot themselves. They were scattered abroad. And it says, even to the time of the latter days, tribulation then will come. If during that tribulation, you see the plan of God, you see the purpose of God is sending that to make them recollect themselves and to repent. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which is swear unto them. Look at Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. We're looking at verse 20. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 20, it says, Is Ephraim my dear son? You see, a pleasant child for sins. I speak against him. I do honestly remember him still. You see the rebuke of the Lord and the chastisement of the Lord is not because he wanted to reject Israel. Israel is called Ephraim here. He said, since I speak against him, I do honestly remember him still. Therefore, my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, says the Lord. Let's look at number three now. Number three, the precious manifestations challenging men to repentance. When God brings his goodness, it's so that you repent. It's not to say, uh, I'm all right. If I were not all right, why will God hear my prayers? If I were not all right, why will God heal me? 
if I were not all right, look, even the people who say they are sanctified and holy and righteous, they don't have the blessings I have. And look at what I have. If everything is not okay, why will God send this? You misunderstand that the Lord is showing mercy, not because you are perfect. There are imperfections there. Maybe there's iniquity there. Maybe there's rebellion there. Maybe there is disobedience there. And the Lord is saying, look at this young man. Look at this lady. I said, messengers number one. And all the words went in one ear and went out the other ear. And then affliction. And the fellow cannot even pray. pray. The, the, the pain is so much. Just rolling on the bed. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. He cannot even repent. Okay. Let me make that subside. Let me now send messengers. Grade 3. The precious manifestations. Challenging men to repentance. Look at Romans chapter 2 verse 4. Romans chapter 2 verse, five, verse 4 Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance that's the purpose when God heals you when God blesses you when God promotes you, in spite of the fact that you are not the best of Christians, you are not the best of consecrated people, you are not the best of people seeking after God, all the same, it brings its pleasure, its healing, its goodness, its manifestation of love and mercy. Are you despising the goodness of God? And the forbearance of God and the long suffering of God, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Look at verse 5 now. In verse 5, but after thine hardness and impenitent heart, treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. And look at Isaiah chapter 26, reading from verse 9, verse 10, then verse 16. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 9. With my soul have I desired thee in the night, yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. You see the purpose? When your judgments are in the earth, the people of the world, the inhabitants of the earth will learn righteousness. Verse 10. It says in verse 10, let favor be showed to the wicked. Favor, healing, answered prayer, goodness, prosperity. Let goodness and favor be showed to the wicked, yet he will not learn righteousness. That's the pity. When God sends messenger upon messenger, the word and then uh, the trouble, the trial, the suffering. And yet it says, it will not learn uh, righteousness. In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, uh, Lord, in trouble have they visited thee. They poured out a prayer when the chastisement, chastening was upon them. 
God tries mercy, then mystery, chastisement, then goodness, and some will repent because of the chastisement. When they are in trouble, they visit the Lord and they pour out a prayer when the chastening rod of the Lord is upon them. The point is very clear. Everything God allows in our life, good, bad, sickness, health, prosperity, promotion, punishment, plague, chastisement, affliction, everything he allows is to drive us to repentance. And I pray that in our lives, we'll not hold on to iniquity, we'll not hold on to sin, will not hold on to evil anything god says he points out and he says that's wrong immediately we hear from the lord that is wrong we throw it off our lives in jesus name and when we repent like that what does repentance bring you come to the lord the messengers of god have not spoken to you and then you repent and the earlier the better when that repentance comes what's the result repentance brings restoration jonah how about that i was restored when i repented repentance brings emancipation it sets you free and then it liberates you repentance brings progress if you are going to make progress you have to repent there's no way deceiving ourselves that we keep on the old path and the old life and the old uh, kind of demonstration and the old rigidity and the old lifestyle and then we think there will be progress no it doesn't come like that it's repentance that brings our that brings restoration e emancipation p progress e entitlement what you are entitled to it is repentance that will bring it to your life as long as the prodigal son will stay in the far country there'll be no entitlement he'll be dying of hunger while he's far away but it brings entitlement then it brings name renewed name renewed what's thy name jacob thy name shall no more be called jacob because that's a supplanter and as you bend the knee now and as you prevail with god and man in your repentance your name is changed you're now israel it brings name renewed it brings temperance in your life when you have really repented and you see the way you were before just rush here rush there jump there jump there and move into fire and move into barren place but now you have repented you look before you jump you think before you act you are deliberate now in your manner of life in your lifestyle that repentance will bring temperance in your life it will bring agreement with god you used to argue with god no god it will not be like that no i'm sure of myself if all people deny you i will never deny you but now you see the result and that man fell on his face and he cried and wept bitterly like a baby and now all that self-confidence and all that self-deception is gone is now in agreement with god and can two work together except they be agreed and now after that there is name entrusted what that means is now that you have repented and you come to the lord with all your heart the name of christ is entrusted unto you i give unto you my name 
and whatever you ask the father in that name i will give unto you it is repentance that makes that entrusted name of christ to walk in your life and to walk in prayer and then it brings cleansing when you repent you are cleansed you are washed the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all iniquity. And then there is endowment. Bring the clothes and bring the fatted calf. Let us rejoice because this my son was dead, but now is alive. He was lost, but now he is found all these benefits will come as you come before the lord and you truly repent because that is what god is waiting for is waiting for your repentance we come to point number three now point number three is the mercy of god driving men towards repentance the mercy of god driving men towards repentance there are three things we're looking at here number one avoidable earthly and eternal suffering through repentance avoidable earthly suffering avoidable eternal suffering through repentance number two assured expressed and evident salvation after repentance there's no salvation without repentance somebody can say i raised up my hand that's good if you're repented somebody can say i follow them to church that's good if you're repented nobody can say i started reading my bible that's good if you have repented somebody can say i removed earring i removed this i removed this that's good if you repent it is repentance turning away from all sin that brings salvation salvation from the lord number three abiding enduring established saints for the rapture all we're doing teaching every monday all we're doing teaching every tuesday all we're doing teaching every thursday all we're doing teaching every saturday all we're doing teaching every sunday all we're doing retreats congress workers uh, retreat program whatever everything is to make you a sage abiding sage and praise the lord all we're doing in all the messages we're preaching whether it is congress or it is retreat or it is workers training anytime anywhere is to make sure that the message of the word penetrates your life and comes into your soul and turns you around and transforms your life and gets you ready to be a sage an abiding sage an established sage an enduring sage ready and waiting for the rapture and i pray the lord will make every one of us ready equipped and qualified for the rapture of the saints in jesus name three things we're looking at number one avoidable earthly and eternal suffering through repentance in lamentation chapter 3 lamentation chapter 3 we're coming to verse 33 for he does not afflict willingly no grieve the children of men that's talking about god if he brings a plague if he brings any trial and if he brings any suffering if he brings or allows any sickness at all he doesn't do that willingly but 
he does that so as to achieve a purpose and achieve a goal for he does not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men look at verse 34 in verse 34 to crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth and verse 35 to turn aside the right of a man before the face of the most high verse 36 to subvert a man in his cause the Lord approveth not and now verse 37 in verse 37 who is he that says and it cometh to pass when the Lord commanded it not what the Lord is saying here is don't you point at so and so is my problem such and such is my problem they will not be your problem if god has not allowed it and if he has allowed it he's waiting for you to examine your heart examine your life examine your attitude examine your response or your reaction to the word of god you are hearing because once you make right your way and wants to say lord i know why this is there i know why that is happening i know why you have allowed this and then you turn everything will be all right you didn't hear me i said everything will be all right look at verse 40 there in verse 40 let us search and try our ways whenever there's any plague whenever there's any problem whenever there's any sickness whenever there's any calamity whenever there's something that you say that should not happen to a child of god why has this happened to me it says before you jump to any conclusion let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord that's what he's waiting for and as you turn to the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind he will answer your prayer in Jesus name and look at Ezekiel chapter 18 Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 30 it tells us there in Ezekiel 18 verse 30 therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn. That's what he's waiting for. Whatever the challenge, whatever the problem, whatever you don't understand of what you are going through in your personal life, in your family, in the local church you know what he's waiting for repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be your ruin verse 31 in verse 31 cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit for why will ye die O house of Israel verse 32 in verse 32 for I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies even in the time of the tribulation I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies in the time of your trial i don't have any pleasure in the death of him that dies in a time of terrible sickness or terrible calamity i have no pleasure in the death of him that dies says the lord god wherefore turn yourselves and leave ye i pray god will give us listening ear obedient heart in jesus name Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11 in Ezekiel chapter 33 
we're looking in at verse 11 say unto them as i labor says the lord god i have no pleasure in the death of the wicked but that the wicked turn from his way and live turn ye turn ye from your evil ways for why will ye die O house of Israel. Second Peter chapter 3, we're looking at verse 9. In Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards words, not willing, underline that, not willing that any should perish. But that all shall come to repentance. Number two. Number two is assured, expressed, and evident salvation after repentance. Assured, expressed, evident salvation after repentance. You remember the case of Nineveh? Jonah said, 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. They repented, they were forgiven, they were saved. And God is still the same as then, even until now. Look at Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 7. At what instant I shall speak? concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck it up and pull it down and to destroy it was it if that nation if that family if that individual against whom i have pronounced turn from their evil i will repent of the evil that I sought to do unto them. All the Lord is waiting for is repentance. And once repentance is put in place, salvation will come. Number three now. Number three is the abiding, enduring, established saints for the rapture. I pray you'll make it in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 11. Matthew chapter 24, from verse 11. How many false prophets shall arise, shall rise and shall deceive many? I pray you will not be deceived. But if you go to their places, you open yourself to deception. If you open their sight and you watch them, you open yourself to deception. If you allow people to transfer what they have seen of false prophets, they transfer it to your phone and then you are watching, you open yourself to deception. They say somebody is walking miracles there, no repentance, no righteousness, no restitution, no new life, no transformed life, and they are doing whatever. They are rubbing them with oil, they are giving them water to drink, and then you say, I'm still deeper, and I'm still sanctified, but I'm going to see what they are doing. You open yourself to deception. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and look at verse 12 it says and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but in verse 13 it says but he that shall endure unto the end he that shall endure halfway i said halfway you know there are people all these years saved steady and steadfast they have been enduring 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 
and they have overcome a lot of challenges a lot of persecutions in the past and now a little persecution not even up to the ones they overcame before just got up to them and then they let down and they say i'm tired every time am i the only one in the church this happened the other time i endured that happened the other time i endured look at it now this new year again see what has happened and then uh, by the wayside they fall aside i will not fall by the wayside i will not give up halfway the journey through until the end you keep on enduring God will give you the grace yeah. his grace is sufficient for you yeah. never turn back never look back and never say I'm going to sit down here whatever happens let it happen you are higher than that you are greater than that you rise up and you say let the devil do his worst i am moving on and you will move on in jesus name but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved and then you will be established in the lord in jesus name hebrews chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 6 hebrews chapter 3 we're reading from verse 6 it tells us in hebrews chapter 3 verse 6 but christ as his son over his own house whose house we are if we hold fast if we hold fast if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of hope firm unto the end you will hold it firm in jesus name first thessalonians chapter 5 in first thessalonians chapter 5 we're reading from verse 9 first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 9 for god has not appointed us unto us but to obtain salvation by our lord jesus christ god has not appointed you unto us god has not appointed you for the great tribulation but to obtain salvation and to obtain deliverance and to obtain protection and to obtain preservation by our lord jesus christ but you know as we have heard and listened to the word of god you might discover there are areas in your life you need to re-examine and you need to repent i told you earlier that repentance is not only for the sinners even for people who are ministers of god look at peter again he was in Antioch. he was with the gentiles and he was eating with the gentiles and that was all right but now the jews came from jerusalem and when peter saw them apostle saved sanctified filled with the holy ghost praying effectively making the lame to rise up taking his stand and telling those pharisees whether well, they're right in the sight of god to obey you rather than god judge ye but we will do what we have learned from the lord great apostle but now as the jews came from jerusalem and he saw them he washed his son quickly and then set himself apart as if he had not been eating with them and paul the apostle said what peter holy ghost man healing person 
and the one that is so fervent and the one that is opening the door to the Gentiles and Jews to come into the kingdom. This hypocrisy, how could you do that? And Peter had to repent of that. You understand? You look at your life. Don't just say, I'm Peter, I'm John, I'm whatever. If you've done what you shouldn't have done, here comes, you know, the angel that opened up revelation to John. And John was so excited and John fell on his face to worship the angel. And the angel said, what? You cannot worship me. I'm a servant of God like you are. Worship God. You have to repent of that too. You understand? We don't take for granted and say, because I'm an overseer, <clears throat> because I'm a general superintendent, therefore I have gone beyond repentance. If you see that in your personal life, in your personal ministry, anything, something has happened that demands repentance, you get on your knees in the face, before the face of the Lord and you repent. And repentance will work wonders in your life in Jesus' name. Our repentance will bring redemption, total redemption. E, repentance will bring expectations. As you come to this new year and you say, I have this expectation and this goal, repentance will bring expectations. P, repentance will bring your possession. The children, the people of God will possess their possessions. We don't just fold our hands. I will possess my possessions. It's repentance that will bring that. E, it will bring enthronement. Enthronement. You are brought to sit side by side with the Lord Jesus Christ because you have turned away from every sin that you ought to turn away from. And then repentance will bring name engraven. You understand that? Aaron was the high priest in Israel. And Aaron was to have the names of the 12 tribes of Israel engraved inside on a plate. He will hang that on himself. And every time he goes before the Lord, the names of the children of Israel already engraved in the, in the effort will go before the Lord. You understand? Jesus is our great high priest. And our names are not only written in the book of life in heaven, they are engraved on his chest. And every time he appears before the heavenly father, because he's sitting by the side of the father there, your name is engraved on that shield before him. And he carries your name to the father every time. All right, he carries my name before the father every time and then you understand repentance will bring tea teachableness teachableness when you have totally repented as a worker as a leader as a minister you'll be solved you'll be receptive you'll be teachable and every time you come speak lord for thy servants are hearing and then it brings assurance and it brings name exalted the name of christ that is exalted above every problem above every sickness will be given to you and then anytime you go before the presence of the lord that name will work for you in jesus name and tonight that name will work for you this year that name will work for you after repentance there's a cleaving you cleave 
unto the Lord. You say, come what me, what shall separate me from the love of Christ? Shall this or this, heaven, earth, sky, sea, ocean, nothing. I'm persuaded that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. You cleave unto him and then it will bring endowment, endowment of power. I said endowment of power. Tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endured for power from on high. And then it says, For ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the, unto the uttermost part of the nation of the world in Jesus' name. Everywhere you go, power will go with you. Everywhere you turn, power will turn with you. You are in the village, power. You are in the community, power. You go to those riverine areas, power in Jesus' name. Bush spirit, forest spirit, water spirit, village spirit, township the spirit tribal spirit as you go like this before you open your mouth when you say in before you mention in jesus name they are all scattered yeah. are you there yeah. i said are you there yeah. let's scatter them tonight let's scatter them tonight let's scatter them tonight why don't you open your mouth and tell the Lord, don't scatter yet, but you call upon the Lord. You look at your life, every area of your life, look at that area of your life that needs repentance, that needs turning, and that needs total turning around. Don't just stay there and say, I'm all right. Maybe you are not all right. Maybe you are not all right. Like Abraham, if there's something to repent about, repent like Peter if there's something to repent about repent like Thomas if there's something to repent about repent like Jonah if there's something to repent about repent call upon the Lord let us search our ways. Let us try our ways. If you repent, you reap. The result and reward of repentance. Repentance is not only for sinners who have never been born again. Prodigal son was a real son in the family. Before he went to the far country, he had to return. He had to repent. Jonah was a real prophet of God. He had to repent. Check up your life. Check up your ways. Check up your response to the calling of God upon your life. Don't be rigid.
Don't be movable. Don't be unteachable. Repentance is the key. That's what the Lord is waiting for. Turning around. Coming into agreement with God. Examine your ways. Examine your attitude. How prompt do you obey God? How transparently do you obey God? How consistently do you obey God? Check up. is right in your life. He has the right to demand of you total obedience. Complete repentance. Total yieldedness is God, is your Lord, Don't cover up. Don't cover up. Let the repentance be genuine. Let the repentance be real. And let the effect of that repentance be permanent. Recover yourself from that inconsistency in your life. Recover yourself from up and down, up and down lifestyle. Become steady now. Become steadfast.
Let that repentance be recognized in heaven. Say, merciful God, when the repentance is genuine, you will bless. You will not withhold what he has promised. If the repentance is satisfactory to him, Seal your commitment. Seal that consecration. I promise him. By his grace, no turning back. No stopping the journey halfway. And his grace is sufficient for you. to ride on eagle swings they'll carry you they'll sustain you will uphold you they will grant you all the grace you need All the power you need for your personal life and for your assigned ministry. He is able, he is willing, he is ready. Give yourself to the Lord unreservedly. Tell him you are happy to follow his way. Happy to do his will. Happy to follow the Lord every step of the way.
In Jesus' name we pray. You know that if you have totally given yourself unreservedly, in total obedience, in total surrender, in total yieldedness, all the benefits of repentance we spoke about today, they are yours in Jesus' name. And every day will be a day of victory. Every day a day of power. Every day a day of achievement. Every day a day of answered prayer. You go out, power. You come back in, power. You go to church, power. You're coming out of the church, power. You go to the village, power. Anywhere, everywhere you go, power will surround you in Jesus' name. What is the person who actually believes that? You believe that? It will happen. Father, in Jesus' name, we exalt you, we honor you, we adore you, we worship you. We thank you, Lord, because you are a good God. Even when there's tribulation or trial or trouble, your intention is not to destroy anyone. Your primary principal goal is to call them to repentance. And we pray, Lord, all of us who are here today, all who are hearing your word as leaders today, all who are hearing beyond where we are now, online, everywhere, we pray as we all surrender and submit to your word. I pray, Lord, any confessed sin, repented sin, forgive in Jesus' name. You have assured us that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. And therefore, Lord, I pray there will be total cleansing for everyone in Jesus' name. Pardon for everyone in Jesus' name. Freedom for everyone in Jesus' name. And the power to live in newness of life. Victorious, triumphant, powerful, prevailing, overcoming. That victorious life give to everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, power in our personal life. Power in our families power surrounding us the utterance proclamation declaration of our mouth power in jesus name for every preacher power every soul winner power on the evangelistic field power and the breakthrough and the exploits we have never seen before I pray for every minister every overseer every leader I pray there will be exploits in Jesus name make us strong make everyone strong everyone healthy everyone courageous everyone bold everyone powerful no power will stand before anyone all powers of darkness are turned down in jesus name as you go back home you go from victory to victory from grace to grace from strength to strength from one level of triumph to another level of triumph go and succeed go and be an achiever 
grow and be a real leader. You will be head, you will not be tail in Jesus' name. And everything God has ordained for you to do, for you to achieve, for you to work out, for you to perform everything the Lord has ordained for you, you will be an achiever, a doer in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray none of your people will know failure. Up all the time. Standing all the time. Steadfast all the time. Victorious all the time. And the joy of the Lord will be the strength of your life. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.